Congressman Steve Israel from the state of New York. Uh, Congressman, uh, welcome to the Young Turks. Good to be with you. How are you doing, Shane? Uh, I'm doing all right, Ex except uh, one thing I'm not doing that great about is this budget bill that you've come to talk to us about. Yeah. Uh, it looks like uh, Bush beat you guys again. Well, I don't know if he beat us again. Look, uh, I'm not happy with this budget bill either. I don't know anybody who is happy with this budget bill. When you're in a situation where Republicans still say that it's too much, uh, and Democrats say that it's not enough. Uh, you know, you're in that kind of uh, classic uh, compromise where everybody leaves unhappy. No. The, the bottom line is this president threatened to close down the federal government to bring it to a halt and produce another failed state if we went over his base number. And so we, at the end of the day, accepted his base number but reordered his priorities and put investments where we wanted them to be and slashed the funding that he wanted to preserve. Yeah, now i got to be honest with you, Congressman Israel. Um, I agree with your priorities, but I definitely disagree with your analysis of the issue. Okay. I, I don't think it was a compromise. I think a lot of the press is uh, characterized as a capitulation, and I agree with them. Yeah. Uh, because y in the beginning, you guys wanted $22 billion extra in spending. Mm -hmm. Then you cut it down to $11 billion extra in spending. And eventually, my understanding is you got zero in extra spending. Well, you're... you're uh... You're right in terms of the process. We did want $22 billion more uh, than the president budgeted, and then we cut it to $11 billion. And at every step of the way, this uh, stubborn president said that he would rather veto this bill uh, and close down the government uh, than agree to come up. So at the end of the day, uh, the only choice we had, which isn't a good choice. I mean, uh, nobody's standing here saying that, you know, this is the greatest budget ever in the history of, of, of the country. Uh, but here are the problems we had. Number one, a president who said he was going to veto any additional spending. And number two, a Senate where we do not have the 60 votes necessary to even bring a budget to the Senate floor for debate. We may have 51 Democrats, but you need 60 votes to do anything there. And so what we ended up doing is accepting the president's numbers, giving him no excuse to veto the bill, uh, increasing veterans' health care, $3.7 billion, increasing medical research, $607 million, uh, increasing rural health care, $147 million, and down the line, while cutting some of his uh, prized uh, priorities. Uh, let me be clear to the audience, because I don't sure. want any uh, confusion here. Sure. There's no question that if we had a Republican Congress, the things that Congressman Israel just mentioned would not have happened, okay? And we would have had a budget that was uh, much worse. How do I know? We had six years of long, brutal, hard experience with that. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, Congressman Israel, I have a, a kind of a revolutionary question for you on, <laughs> on, on Bush's veto threat. Yeah. So what? Well, that's a good question. I'll tell you so what. Uh, two things would have happened. Uh, one, uh, we would have essentially closed down the government. Uh, the the uh, president would have vetoed so the bill. We wouldn't have been able well, and, and, and that leads to this. I've got senior citizens in my district uh, who can't afford to uh, heat their homes. Light heat funding would have been stopped. Uh, veteran, the $3.7 billion that we promised the veterans, canceled. Uh, Not canceled, co College delayed. aid programs, terminated. Now, the Republicans closed down government in 1994, uh, and I think that the American people were fed up with, uh, with that strategy. No, no, uh, no. I don't want the Democrats to take the majority and then have to say to people, well, I know it's, uh, you can't afford to heat your homes, but we're in a standoff with the president, so just make do. No. Congressman Israel, here's an enormous difference between when the Republicans closed down government mm -hmm. and, and this situation. Number one, you guys wouldn't be closing down the government. You'd be passing a bill and giving it to the president, and then the president would be vetoing it, and thereby he'd be closing down the government. Right. That's issue number one. Issue number two is, when they did it, Bill Clinton was at 66% approval rating. Mm -hmm. This guy's at 24%. Mm -hmm. You can't ask for a weaker opponent. If between you and the, and the uh, president, I mean, the country is screaming, yeah. we're going to go on your side, not his side. For the love of God, will you fight him? And can you not see how uh, not only your electorate, who are Democrats, mm -hmm. but independents in the great majority of the country are frustrated that you guys won't fight him? Politically, you're right. Uh, we probably would have had the upper hand uh, with the president, probably could have scored lots of political points. But substantively, the concern that many of us had is that this guy is just reckless enough uh, to close down the government. And, and, you know, you've got a lot at stake. You've got, again, you've got the low-income heating assistance programs that would be terminated. You've got kids who are applying to college who wouldn't get the Pell Grants that they need. I mean, you have a lot of hostages uh, in uh, in a political game. And, um, you know, this ends up being the least of a series of, of bad alternatives. The other option, Shane, uh, 
would have um, would have been uh, just passing a a uh, continuing resolution to fund government at last year's levels, which actually would be deeper cuts than even the president had provided. So, given the three uh, alternatives, deeper cuts than the president provided. Uh, not being able to provide basic services to, to the most vulnerable people because of this political standoff or with a, a reckless president, uh, or uh, going to the president's numbers but reordering his priorities, the, the last seemed to be uh, the most sensible alternative. Yeah, uh, well, you know, of course, reasonable people can disagree on that, but I definitely disagree with the way Democratic leadership went on that. Because here's the thing, we're not just talking about this fight, we're talking about every fight. And if at every fight, and you nailed it, Congressman Israel, he, he's holding these people hostage. Mm -hmm. He's holding the American people hostage. And in the Iraq war, he's holding our troops hostage, mm -hmm. saying, oh, okay, if you guys don't give me everything I want, then the troops aren't going to get the armor they need. They're not going to get the money and the funds that they need, and I'm going to hold them hostage over your head. Yeah. But you've got to call him on this, because if you don't, you're going to lose every single battle, and he knows it. Sure. Well, part of the, you know, I, I, I think we have called him on it several times. Uh, look, he did, he said he would fight the minimum wage tooth and nail. Uh, we passed the minimum wage despite his mm -hmm. protests. He said he would fight uh, cafe standards in an energy bill. We're passing legislation today with cafe standards. Uh, so, See, you know, I, look, I, I know, I know there's a lot of frustration out there, but, but give us a little bit of credit for the stuff that we have stood up on. The other thing I want to add is just, you know, and I know it's frustrating because you get into this debate about, uh, you know, was Madison right when he created a bicameral of the Congress? And that's a, that's a sleeper. But the fact of the matter is that uh, we don't have enough votes in the Senate uh, no. to, to even get, you know, these uh, a lot of this stuff to the Senate floor for a vote. They're holding us hostage over there. Well, again, I'm not buying it. I've got to be honest with you, okay. Congressman Israel. And I'll tell you why. And here's what. When, we, when the Democrats were in the minority, okay, uh -huh. uh, they said the filibuster is extreme and can only be used if there's, you know, yeah. nuclear warfare and it's the most <laughs> drastic thing you could ever do. And the Democrats bought into it. Mm -hmm. And you guys were scared to death of using it. Okay? Yeah. And now all of a sudden, the filibuster, every single bill gets filibustered. Every yeah. single one of them. So you've got to change the language. You've got to change the debate. And the way you do it is by challenging them. Look, here's another perfect example. The, the energy bill that you just mentioned. Right. Overall, the energy bill is a good one. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, and we talked about it on the show. Credit to the Democratic Congress. It would have never passed in the Republican Congress. It wouldn't have even gotten to the floor in the Republican Congress. The flip side is, you guys lost on the oil subsidies, the $13.5 billion, and you took it out. Now, here's President Bush telling you, you can't, he can't spend another nickel on the elderly, on kids, on education, on the poor, on Americans, on middle-class Americans. He can't spend another nickel. But he can give away $13.5 billion to the oil companies? You've got to be able to make that argument, take your argument to the public, and win that argument. Yeah. Look, I have no disagreement with you. The Republicans are much better obstructionists than Democrats are. I'm with you 100% on that. And sometimes, quite bluntly, uh, I wish that Democrats were more like Republicans tactically, not, not mm -hmm. ideologically, not philosophically, but tactically. At the end of the day, as David Obey, who's the chairman of the Appropriations Committee, said, we have a responsibility as adults to cut the best deal that we can, move on, and continue providing services. Uh, I'm not sure that most Republicans qualify as adults in this Congress, and certainly the President, I wouldn't say, qualifies as an adult. They would rather bring down the government to score political points than provide low-income heating assistance for the elderly. We are, it, it pains us sometimes that, we're, you know, that, that we have to be the adults in this country, but it comes with being in the majority. Yeah, I, I just think that if you're going to continue down that path, you're going to lose every single battle. Because you're well, signaling to them that you will not fight. If they take hostages, you will concede. They could not imagine two years ago that this Congress would pass comprehensive climate control legislation. Now, it's true that uh, at the end of the day, we didn't, you know, those, those, those $14 billion in tax breaks for big oil companies are in there. Not because of House Democrats, by the way. We overwhelmingly took them out. But the Senate, in, with, with that 60 vote threshold, uh, insisted on putting them back in. At the same time, the President's going to be forced to sign a bill that has corporate average fuel economy standards that are increased despite all the best efforts of the K Street lobbyists. So, you know, that, that's, that's a victory that we can enjoy. That's true. Let me ask you this final question then. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking to Congressman Steve Israel from uh, New York. Congressman, I know you're in the House and it's a Senate issue, as you said there, but, uh, you know, the, Democrat, the Republicans go to filibuster this $14 billion uh, oil subsidy. It's a subsidy. 
that's taken. I mean, you got to realize, and the Republicans used to talk about this in the 1980s all the time, in 1990s too. But it's and it and it's because it resonates with people. It's our money. It's right. our money. They're right. they're taking it out, out of my pocket and my family's pocket, and they're giving it to the oil companies in the middle of record profits. And right. there is the, maybe the only thing more unpopular in the country than uh, George Bush and Dick Cheney are the oil companies. Yep. And how come in the Senate the Democrats don't say, oh, you want to filibuster that? Hey, go to work, my friend. Here, I'll give you days and weeks to filibuster it. Make your argument to the American people how much you want to give away their money to the oil companies. Why on God's green earth don't you guys do that? Well, uh, it's true. That is above my pay grade. Uh, and, if I, and I will tell you, the House passed bill, took those $14 billion, stripped them out of uh, tax cuts for oil company executives, uh, and invested them in renewable energies. This, these Republicans in the Senate have managed, they, you, know, you know what their big victories are? They've stopped health insurance for children. Uh, they have restored tax cuts to big oil companies, uh, and it is frustrating. If we had our way in the House, those, that $14 billion figure would have been eliminated. We go back to the House bill. I wish uh, that uh, the Senate had different rules and we would have been able to produce that bill uh, to the President. And I would have loved for the President to veto that bill. You don't need different rules. You just need uh, a little bit more fight in your step. Well, we need a few more Democrats in the Senate to get, uh, it, to, get no. it to a supermajority and a Democratic president. Well, I saw yesterday all you needed was one strong Democrat to uh, get what you needed when Senator Dodd stood up. So, right. uh, But, Congressman Israel, we appreciate you coming on the Young Turks. Hey, and, thanks, uh,